Today we're going to barrel age a cocktail, the barrel age Negroni. For this recipe, you're going to need a large measuring cup, a bar spoon, a funnel, a fine mesh strainer, a bottle, a pitcher, and most importantly, a small oak barrel. The ingredients are gin, Campari, sweet vermouth, and an orange peel for garnish. When looking for a cocktail to barrel age, you want to stick to spirit forward drinks. Bitter drinks do particularly well, and the poster child for bitter drinks is the Negroni. It's an old drink that's enjoying a much deserved resurgence, and it's served in most bars and restaurants. It even has a week dedicated to it. Like a lot of its fellow classic drinks, the Negroni has an obscure origin. There are a lot of rumors and rabbit holes for this one, but the most commonly repeated story is that in 1919, an Italian aristocrat named Negroni wanted to replace the soda water in his Americana with gin, and that this variation was named after him. There are a couple branches of the Negroni family that claim it was their ancestor who created the drink. However, their stories are hard to prove because they lack the hard evidence of documentation. What we can say for sure is that this drink dates back to at least 1947. One of the earliest records of it in print was a newspaper account from Orson Welles. He was shooting black magic in Rome, and he told the newspaper about an exciting new drink he'd been introduced to called the Negroni. He said of the drink, the bitters are excellent for your liver. The gin is bad for you. They balance each other. I'm not sure how medically sound his advice was, but Wells is in a bitter state of mind because almost exactly a month before, he filed for divorce from his second wife, Rita Hayworth. Orson Welles may have been responsible for getting the Negroni in print for the first time, but it wasn't the first time the recipe of gin, Campari, and sweet vermouth was found in print. In Europe, particularly in France, there were a lot of drinks that appeared in bar books that were virtually the same as the Negroni, but under different names. They started popping up around the late 1920s. The Zaza cocktail in 1927, the Julio in 1928, and the Campari Nette in 1929, as well as others. All of these appeared in French bar books and were created by different people. And that's not even mentioning the Boulevardier and the Old Pal, the bourbon and rye versions of the Negroni template. They too appeared in French bar books in the 1920s, but these drinks were both invented by Americans. 20 years earlier in 1907, Arnaldo Strucchi in his book, The Vermouth of Turin, wrote that an Americano is called an Americano because in the United States, it's customary to drink vermouth mixed with bitters and gin or whiskey. By bitters, he meant things like Chinar, Fernet, or Campari, not Angostura or Peixotes. According to Strucchi, the Negroni and the Boulevardier were born out of American drinking habits, and they were all riffs on the same basic chords, which would make sense why there were so many drinks created along the same lines in bars that were frequented by the Lost Generation, a gaggle of American expats living in Europe in the 1920s. So perhaps Negronis, Boulevardiers, Americanos, and the endless array of Negroni riffs should be broadly classified as Americanos. But this particular Americano definitely won the popularity contest. At the start of our current cocktail renaissance, the Negroni got pushed to the forefront of the revival, despite the fact that bitterness was a flavor that had been long exercised from our modern palates. The drink rode in on the bitter wave with the likes of the craft beer IPA craze, and the bitingly dark Starbucks coffee a decade before it. The embrace of bitterness helped expand our modern palates beyond the explosively salty and cloyingly sweet. But perhaps it was that very quality, the rebelliousness of it, that made the Negroni so popular. That and its signature bright red color. As always, use your favorite gin, but I went with a gin that was designed specifically for a Negroni. This was done by tailoring the botanicals to complement the flavors of a Negroni. And it doesn't hurt that the spirit base is made from clementines instead of grain, and that some of those citrus qualities shine through. Aging a cocktail in a barrel will round off some of the hard edges and impart some of the barrel's characteristics to the drink. The barrel-aged drink has more vanilla, deeper earthy notes, and a touch of oakiness. So it's never a good idea to compare a barrel-aged cocktail to its fresh counterpart and expect them to be the same thing. It's better just to think of them as separate drinks, because the flavors take on such a different dimension. Building a cocktail for barrel aging is about being able to scale it. Since the liquid is what causes the wood to expand, which creates the seal, you'll need to keep the barrel full. This recipe is for a one liter barrel. You'll have to scale it up for a two liter or a three liter or an even bigger barrel. And if you have a bigger barrel, you'll most likely need to age it a little longer as well. Assuming it's a new barrel, the first step will be to cure it. 
Do this by filling it with warm water and dumping it out again. It may leak from the head or the butt. In that case, you'll need to cure it again and again until it's ready to go. The idea is to get the water to expand the wood until it creates a watertight seal. In this case, however, I also seasoned the barrel with some overproof Jamaican rum. I used a bottle of Ray and Nephew. I filled up the barrel and let it sit for a month. When I pulled it out, I had a great replacement for the extinct 17-year Ray and Nephew, which was the rum that was used in the original Trader Vic's Mai Tai. Once you're ready to add the booze to the barrel, measure 340 milliliters, or about 11 and a half ounces of gin. Pour that in your pitcher. Measure 340 milliliters, or about 11 and a half ounces of Campari. Pour that in your pitcher. Measure 340 milliliters, or about 11 and a half ounces of sweet vermouth. Add that to your pitcher. Give that a quick stir, then give it a small taste. Make sure you're putting a cocktail you want to drink into the barrel. Then pop in your funnel and pour it in your barrel. Pull out the funnel, plug in the bung, and wait. In the case of a one liter barrel, three to four weeks is a sweet spot. You don't want to leave it in too long unless you really like the taste of oak in your cocktail. It's always a good idea to taste a little along the way. That way you'll see how it's progressing. It may take a little more or a little less time depending on the barrel, its environment, and how many times you've used it. With this one, 30 to 45 days is a good benchmark, but let your taste buds be the judge. When it gets to the right place, unplug the bung, turn your spigot, and drain the barrel. It's normal to lose a little in the process. Stick in a funnel and pour it in your bottle using a fine mesh strainer. That'll help pick up any little bits of charred oak that might have come through. Then slap on a homemade label and you're good to go. When you're ready to drink it, measure out a couple ounces, pour it over ice in a mixing glass, and stir it to chill it down and give it some dilution. Then strain it over a large hunk of ice in your chilled rocks glass. Hit it with an orange twist. Express the oils of your orange twist over the drink. Rub it along the rim of your glass and drop it in for garnish. And there it is, the Barrel H Negroni. Enjoy. Click here for more videos. Be sure to subscribe and check us out on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. For links, more info, and the printed recipe, Check out the description below.